and welcome to my first out and about trip of 2023. And no, I'm not trespassing, as you can see, we are actually allowed to be here. I am here at the Didcot Railway Centre. As you can see, plenty of Great Western locomotives in the background. We're currently in the main shed here at the centre. I haven't been here for a long time, so it's going to be interesting to see what they have tucked away, and I can imagine it's quite a lot. And just over this way, we have Pendennis Castle, which I'm going to show you closer up. Uh, my camera mount today is actually a class 08. You can't see it, but it's right here. This is the buffer of a class 08 that the camera is currently sitting on. So thank you to the 08 for that. So I'm going to take you on a tour of the site and look at some of the highlights. As you can tell, yeah, it's a bit windy and the doors are rattling, but ah well, it's part of the UK weather, isn't it? So sit back and enjoy the tour of Didcot Railway Centre, the home of the Great Western Railway. just stop at this local just behind me. This is a Great Western Castle class and it's number 5051 which is Dressloin Castle. I've stopped at this one because one of my memories of this local was actually doing a mainline tour all the way from my hometown of Bridgend to London Pinton, otherwise known as Earl Bathurst. It used to have that name as well. And quite funny, it actually ran out of steam uh, just outside Bristol. Don't know how that happened, but they managed to get it going. Really amazing trip. And to see it here is uh, still quite nice to see it, even though there's not steam coming out of it. So let's carry on the tour here at the railway centre. Now here is an interesting look at a locomotive. Now I believe this is a 1366 class. Now correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the comments, but I believe that's what this is. I believe it used to live on the South Devon Railway, I think. But you can actually see what it's like without the boiler. You've got the suspension, the leaf springs there. And if we come over this way, you can actually see inside the frames. Here we go. That's what it looks like underneath the boiler. Obviously all the uh, valve gear is out at the moment because they're restoring it. There's that whistle again. Doesn't look like a great western logo, does it? The smart little thing though. So well, as you can see, I'm on a cab of the logo. Now this is a great western hall class. Now the name is down there. I'm going to probably muck it up, but this is Hinterton Hall. I think I said that right. I'm not too sure. But this is a good thing about this, and we get sound effects as well. We can get in the cab of some of the locos, and it's really quite impressive to see how big these locos are. I'm going to bring you up into the cab in just a moment, and we'll give you a tour around as well. It's well worth coming up here and having a look. And here we are then in the cab of this loco, and as you can see we do have some sound effects. Obviously we've got the regulator there, the whistle chains. It's all in really rather nice condition, and you can see, if we come down there, you can see the firebox there. This is a really nice locomotive to get in the cab, isn't it? Now we are actually sat. Now I don't know, am I sat on the driver's side or the fireman's side? You can never remember. Let me know in the comments. But this is the view that you can actually get when on a steam locomotive. I think that window needs a clean. But if we just come out this side, there we go. That's the view you can get. And some of the other locos here as well. Where 
are my uh, favourite diesel locomotives here, the lovely uh, Class 14, otherwise known as a teddy bear. Almost getting blown over here at the moment, it is really quite windy. There's a, a, a Class uh, 08 there, see what I mean by the wind? And there's some of their rolling stock as well, plenty of wagons and rolling stock here. Unfortunately I can't film everything because we'll be here for the next couple of years if I do that. But here we go, we can see more wagons and there's the coaling stage just for there as well. And here is a closer look at that uh, coaling stage that I mentioned in the last shot. You can see how it worked. You can just see the wagon in the entrance up there. It would have tipped the coal and then the loco would have sat just under there. You can see there and they would have tipped the coal into the tenders. Would have been a lovely sight to watch a loco here right now, wouldn't it? As you can see. They got a ton of rolling stock, as I mentioned as well. Quite a lot of it uh, scattered around. Well, as you can see in front of us, it's not just steam locos that are here. This is a Class 52 Western, pretty much built by the Great Western Railway, and this is Western Thuselier. And just parked next to it, we have one of these curious things. A diesel rail car. Always love to travel on one of these. So as you can hear in the background, they are working on locomotives here, so let's have a look around. The locomotive works. Well, as you can see, it's not just diesel locomotives and steam locomotives here. You'd be thinking, well hang on a minute, this is a diesel locomotive. No, it's not. This is number 18,000, and believe it or not, this was a gas turbine locomotive. Yeah, the Great Western went a bit nuts and produced this pretty impressive machine, but as I said, a gas turbine. Now I believe sadly there is nothing left inside, it's just a shell and as you can see it's looking a bit rough out during the British weather but still to stand up against something as one off as this is uh, really quite impressive. Pity we can't get in the cab of this but uh, probably get shouted at if I try to get in there. So we're going to continue the tour a little bit more and show you more of the uh, rail centre. Here we go, this is something a little bit different. Very uh, old timer, as you could say, looking locomotive. Now, if I just look at the track, hmm, that doesn't look like standard gauge track to me. Well, that's because it isn't. This is a broad gauge loco. This uh, was the gauge before standard came along. For some reason, it never sort of took off here in the UK. But uh, you can see how much bigger the locomotives would have been, uh, designed by Brunel, of course. and. Uh, the passenger comfort wasn't too good. Let's go and have a Here look. Here we what I go. Mean. This is that uh, sort of, well, can you call it a passenger coach? I'm not sure. It's more like a cattle wagon, isn't it? But um, one of the more sort of upmarket kind of coaches for back then. But there's definitely no creature comforts. There's um, still wooden seats, no padding on them. So I don't think we can complain with our uh, trains today, especially as you know the Class 800. We love to complain about those, but. Just imagine travelling in this. Sure, it was a bit of an experience. More like a roller coaster than a train. This is a recreation of a sort of Great Western station here at the railway centre. Sadly, they're not running any trains today, but as you're going to see in the next shot, there are trains over there because that is the main line over to Oxford, so you'll be seeing that in a minute. But there we go, that is the end of the video here at the Didcot Railway Centre. Hope you really enjoyed something a bit different for you, and obviously don't forget to like and comment underneath what you thought. Um, is it worth it? Of course it is, and it's only £8 to get in, so I thought, yeah, that's a really nice uh, price, really, and it's a big sight, plenty of locos to see. So I am just going to leave you with the shot now of a container train uh, on its way towards Oxford. And that's it from me. I'll be back on location or back at the layout very soon. Bye everyone.